Hello everyone, welcome to our series. We came to the end of data visualization videos. In this video, I will show you how to do circle plots in R. You can find the documentation of this video on my R blog. I put the link in the description below. You will find in the documentation all the commands that I will be using in this video. So let's start. So what is circle plots? Circle plots, they are circular layout and they are very useful to represent complicated information. They elegantly represent information with large number of category. For example, we have a table with many columns and rows. In this plot here, we can see the bottom half of the circle. It represents the rows in that table and the upper half of the circle. It represents the column of that table. It also shows data with multiple track focusing on the same object and it easily demonstrates relations between elements. So in video 19, I showed you how to do heat maps. In video 20, I showed you how to do PCA. And in this video, I will show you how to do circle plots. One thing you should know that when you are trying to visualize your data, you need to visualize it the best way possible so the reader will understand your data and also will get the maximum information possible. So I plot same data using heat map, PCA, and circle plot. And as we can see, PCA did not represent the data as circle plot and heat map. And heat map and the circle plot, they represent the data in similar way, but circle plot here is more beautiful and elegant. So as an example, I'll be using a table from the supplement data of recent published article from Duncan Lab. What they did is they used 17 strain of actinobacteria and proteobacteria, and they did genome sequencing and genome scaffolding. Then they searched for biosynthetic gene clusters using anti-smash website, and then they created the circle plot. So before we move forward, what is biosynthetic gene clusters and why we are searching for them? So we all know there is antibiotic resistant crisis, so we are always searching for new drugs. And one way possible is to isolate novel secondary metabolites from new or rare microbial species that may become a potential drug in the future. So the gene responsible for producing secondary metabolites are mostly found in cluster on the genome. And this is called biosynthetic gene clusters. The most common biosynthetic gene clusters are polyketide synthase, and non-ribosomal peptide synthesis. So after they did the genome sequencing and ge genome scaffolding, they, they load the file uh, into anti-smash website and they got results like this. So this is the anti-smash result of the strain KRD026. And we can see here that cluster type and how many clusters. So we can see here, there, it's, there is a one cluster here, the terpene is cluster here, one, one. So after collecting the result of the all strain, they form a table like this. On the row, they ro put the strain type and on the column, they put the biosynthetic gene cluster. So go to the table three in the supplementary, uh, make the table similar to this one and save it in a CSV format. Now your file is ready to do circle plot. So let's go to our studio and see how we can do it. So first what we need to do is we need to install and load this package. Since I had already installed it, I'm just gonna load it. Now we will use the read CSV function to read our file, which I named data and assign it to data. So now the table is here. We can see the strain types and the cluster type on the column. Now we need to convert our table to a matrix. So we will use the cohort diagram to plot a cohort diagram. Cohort diagram is a type of circle plot. So let's run the command. Now we can see here our cohort diagram, but we have a problem. The labels, they are on top of each other. So we need to uh, solve this problem. So to solve this problem first, what we need to do is we need to create a cohort diagram without labeling. So always you need to use this uh, command to clear plot that you did and then we can do another one so let's 
run this command. So now we have the uh, cohort diagram, but without the label and also without the axis. So we will use this command to add the label and add the axis. So we use this argument facing equal clockwise to change the angle of the writing. So to save it, we will use this uh, command. Now you can find the file in your directory. So first let's clear this before we go to the next plot. The next plot is how we color the link the way we want. So since we already read the file and converted to matrix, we don't need to do this. This is the third command is where we assign the colors. So these here, they are the strain types. So I color them in a specific way. So you can change these colors according to your preference. If you want to change the colors, you can write on Google color palette R and you can just change the numbers or you can write just red, yellow, or black, R can read these colors. And I left all the column, the cluster types, in color gray. So I don't want to have too much, like you see here, the cluster type, they are in different colors, strain, they are in different color. Too many colors is confusing sometimes in a plot. So I assign specific color for a specific group of strain and, and assign it to call. And then I'm going to run the cohort diagram again without label and axis and with the additional of this argument. So let's run this command. And as we can see here, there is a group of strain. They share similar colors, purple, and also group they share blue and two they share yellow and the rest is because they are one strain. So again, we will add the axis and the labels and now our plot is ready. Again, you can save this using the two command here, and you can find the file in the directory in a high definition. So this is the end of video 21, and this is the end of data visualization videos. Next group of videos will be about data manipulation. Thank you for watching.